This song is for all those people out there who just don't understand what archaeology is all about. Hello, Shirt Shards and Shatter, and welcome back to episode four of Archie Fantasies Watches Graham Hancock's Netflix show. And this episode, I imagine, is going to be incredibly brief, uh, only because um, the Bimini Road is not real, and Hancock spends about a third to a half of the show talking about it. Um, and then we go look at some maps that are completely misinterpreted and um, completely misinterpreted and, and questionable in origin nonetheless. Uh, yeah, that's that's the episode. Um, so much like last time, if you wanted to check out right now, I, I don't blame you. Go ahead and put like uh, put a compass emoji down in the comments if you were like nope out um and if you're sticking around for the rest of it i will see you at the end of the video episode four hunt for atlantis i don't know what it's called i'm no more a pseudo scientist than a dolphin is a pseudo fish i'm an investigative reporter my job is to investigate the official story i like how he tries to hide behind his work as a journalist as if he's doing journalism um because another part of being a journalist is, well, citing your sources and providing evidence and also accepting evidence when it's been given to you. Um, so I don't know, like, clearly we have different definitions of what journalism is, uh, which I guess should surprise absolutely no one. Bimini Road, which is how the Bimini Road is natural. There is no reputable uh, geologist that will say otherwise. I understand that it looks not natural. There's a lot of things in nature that look man-made that are not. Uh, and this is one of those things that Hancock has had this explained to him by authorities in this thing, you know, of this kind of a thing. And he chooses to ignore them because he needs the Bimini Road to be real in order for his theory to work. He also has no evidence to contradict that this is not a natural uh, occurrence. But he's going to insist that it's man-made. Which is why I've come here with some state-of-the-art technology and a team of experts to reopen this cold case. My dive buddy is Dr. Michael Haley. Oh, yay. I will not be giving this guy the benefit of the doubt. Um. This isn't the first time he's dived the Bimini Road, uh, and this isn't the first time I think Walter, Scott Walter, has been here too. And I want to say there's two guys who were doing, I don't know, they, it was just these two bros who had like a TV show for a hot minute, and they were basically going around looking at various pseudo, pseudo archaeology, pseudoscience claims like this, um, because they were trying to prove it. That was, that show was, that show was something. That, that was, not a good show. Um, but anyway, this place is, the Bimini Road has been examined so many times by so many different people that if there were any evidence that it was man-made, it would have been discovered by now. And it's, it's still up for debate. It's, it's really not up for debate. The only people debating it are people who want it to be man-made. Uh, those are the only people that feel that this is controversial because I guess the rest of us don't want to risk our reputation dude <laughs> ah watching your show risks my reputation like literally uh but you know what i'm gonna do it anyway um so i mean i it i'm not trying to preserve my reputation by saying the bimini road is not man-made it's it's not man-made <laughs> there's no evidence i know i keep harping on that for a reason Anyway, let's go watch him dive around some cool rocks and some really blue water. Let me the, uh, I actually the hate diving episodes. The of the Caribbean for over 40 and I, years. I don't really know why. Uh, probably because I don't like diving in general. I, like, it makes me feel claustrophobic and just watching them do this. Like, I know that's supposed to be a really cool shot, but it just gives me the shivers. <laughs> Yes, it can. 
And also the Bimini Road really isn't the only example of this. There's lots of examples of this that occur in the water and on land. Um, most of them are like out in the desert. I'd have to dig some of them up. But they this this kind of a structure does exist elsewhere. And it's natural. That's how we know this one's natural. That and, you know, people who know shit about rocks have looked at this and gone, this is natural. Hancock desperately needs this to not be natural. And that's the only reason we're here. He's going to provide no evidence at all, again, that this is not natural, that this is man-made. But we're gonna run with it. Oftentimes, a shelf of beach rock will fracture into pieces while still maintaining its overall shape. But the blocks at Bimini are clearly distinct from one another and uniformly pillow-shaped. Can we just look at the image that he has on screen right now? They're not these rocks, which are part of the Bimini Road that he is providing the image of, are not uniform. They don't, these do not look exactly alike. They are not exactly the same shapes. As a matter of fact, if you kind of look at it and then look at the image he showed earlier of actual beach rock, they look very similar, except that these are water eroded and the beach rocks are not because the beach rocks are on the land and these are underwater and have been for a long time. Like, this is what I'm talking about. He says something and then immediately contradicts himself, but because he just keeps talking, nobody notices, apparently. It's very hard for me to see how nature could have made it. I've never seen beach rock fracture in that way. Me neither. Have you? Me neither. And it speaks to... You literally showed it. You literally showed it. I mean, you guys can sit here and convince each other that it's man that it's man-made all you want. You have contradicted yourself in your own show with your own film the biggest blocks are anywhere from 10 to 13 feet long and 7 to 10 feet wide again this is a reconstruction i'm going to assume that hancock came up with um or someone on his crew came up with because there's no archaeologist that would do this because we don't believe this is man-made secondly even this reconstruction you can clearly see the rocks are not uniform <laughs> They're none of the things that Hancock claims they are. And since Hancock gets to reconstruct this any way he wants, he can make it look any way he needs it to in order for it to support his theory. And yet, archaeologists have been slow to take up the challenge of looking for evidence of older civilizations here in the Bahamas. They refuse to consider the possibility. If there was an advanced civilization that lived, say, 30,000 years ago, which is what Graham thinks. Um, for starts, Michael Schirmer is not an archaeologist. I believe he's a philosopher and even if he's not he's still not an archaeologist <laughs> yeah michael Shermer is not an archaeologist so i don't know what he thinks he's proving by talking to michael Shermer. <laughs> even if michael Shermer wanted to do archaeological research in the bahamas which i'm sure most people would love to do because it's the bahamas uh he couldn't because he's not an archaeologist he's also not part of the Bahamas? Like, he's not a Bahama national? Do we own the Bahamas? Is that a United States territory? Is it? Oh, it's an independent country. Fun fact, independent sovereign nations get to control who gets to do archaeology on their land. And I know that Graham Hancock is British and so therefore has a hard time understanding the concept of states not belonging to them. Um, but you can't just go to a country and do archaeology. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, and that's because people screwed that up during the Victorian era. Also, a country should have control over who's doing what inside their borders. If the Bahamas doesn't want to do archaeology, then the Bahamas doesn't have to do archaeology. And they sure as fuck don't have to let you come in and do archaeology just to satisfy the idea that there may or may not have been a lost civilization, a.k.a. Atlantis, somewhere underneath the waters at some point. But yet I'm sure it's a huge conspiracy to keep you from being able to prove your theory that you still, still have yet, episode four, two hours, still have yet to provide any evidence for. I don't understand what Michael Shermer has to do with any of this. I'm going to back this up because I, I'm very confused as to why we're talking to Michael Shermer. I'm, I'm really confused by this one. <laughs> I don't even like Michael Shermer, but he's... He's a skeptic, yes, and I know Schirmer's taken Hancock to, to task multiple times, um, but he's not an archaeologist. 
he he's not an archaeologist. This make this transition makes no sense. I'm very confused. Civilization that lived say thirty thousand years ago, which is what Graham thinks. Okay, where is their trash? Where are the homes? You know, where are their stone tools or metal tools? He's not wrong. Where's their writing? He's he's not wrong. There could be such evidence of an advanced civilization of the Ice Age waiting to be found beneath the waves. On the okay, so it's the invisible teapot argument again. Uh, he can't prove that there is evidence for his lost civilization because it's all underwater and since we can't prove that there isn't evidence of an advanced civilization because it's all underwater therefore there must be an advanced civilization underneath the water <laughs> um you have to believe in the teapot in order to see the teapot you guys this is how the teapot the invisible teapot argument works I think there's also like an invisible dragon that lives in my my garage, which is even funnier because I don't have a garage or do I? But if I do, there's an invisible dragon that lives inside there. You can't see it or touch it. Uh, you can't interact with it in any way, but it is. It does live in my my garage that I they you also can't see. <laughs> this, this is the argument. The argument is. Uh, I believe that there is a lost civilization underneath the water that may or may not be Atlantis, and you can't prove me wrong, therefore, it must be true. Even though all of the evidence I'm using has been proven to be not the things I'm claiming it to be, but I still say that there is this thing there, and I can't be wrong. This is the argument making it a hugely important landmark for any ships heading northward out of the Gulf of Mexico toward the Atlantic. Like the legendary boat with no paddles of Quetzalcoatl, the stone slabs could have been part of some larger monument or place marker. What? What was that? Something, something... The Bahamas could have been a landmark for ships. Something the Bimini Road. No. Something, something, Bahamas being a... Marker for ships, Quexicotl's serpent boat, and now those two things prove the Bimini Road is man-made. I don't know what just happened here. This episode is nuts. I honest to God, he's completely losing me. And I'm usually pretty good at this. I, I don't know where this is going. I don't think it's going anywhere and it's just kind of jumping around so i don't know let's let's, let's what was the argument before any modern explorer had ever laid eyes on it okay I, i'm losing i'm losing the, the story here let's pretend like the peary rep peary reese map is authentic and let's pretend like people really were dry drawing the coastline of antarctica so where are you going with this actually maybe i think i know where you're going with this you're going to claim that they're copying maps that were from the ice age so you're going to claim that there's ice age aged maps that somehow survived into the 1300s um for other people to somehow make copies of i i think i'm predicting that's where this is gonna go i don't know why it matters because you're trying to compare it to the modern coastline of antarctica not the ice aged uh coastline because i don't know if antarctica was a continent at that time i think it might have been part of something else um so again, I'm very confused as to where this whole thing is going. It, I, this is a really weird episode, you guys. It's... Maybe I'm tired. But if that is Antarctica on the Piri Reese map, why is it so oddly oriented and connected to South America? I don't know. Have a look at Antarctica's coastline, not as it is today. But as geologists think it was, when sea levels were lower and the southern ice cap extended north during the last ice age. <sighs> if you trace out Antarctica's ice age coastline, it looks a lot like the one on the Piri Reese map. Okay, so he is trying to say that Antarctica. this is... He is trying to say that this is the ice aged 
Antarctica coastline. I don't, I don't have anything to say, man. The absurdity of this entire claim is self-evident, and I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I got nothing. Well, at the risk of yet again incurring the wrath of those in mainstream academia, <laughs> let's talk about Atlantis. You have literally five minutes left of this episode, and now you want to talk about Atlantis? Incurring our wrath is a bit strong. Incurring our eye rolls? Yes, I will give you an eye roll. Hancock really seems to think that people sit up at night thinking about him constantly. It's a... It's an interesting world you live in. A lost advanced civilization of the Ice Age. The Greek philosopher Plato is uh, the oldest surviving source for the story of Atlantis. He's not the oldest surviving source. He's the literal originator of the story. <laughs> Which he describes quite vividly. Yes, because it's a thought experiment. Atlantis was a precocious civilization. Boasting beautiful architecture, advanced technology, and city planning on a monumental scale. This image that he's using is what it's it's a con it's a conceptual image that a lot of modern Atlantean believers like to use. Um, there is again no evidence that Atlantis looks like this because there's no Atlantis for one, uh, and for two, since there's no Atlantis, there's no way to know what it would have looked like because it's a literal thought experiment that Plato put forward to his students. In a book. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Scale. It also commanded a vast fleet capable of navigating the world. I like how he's talking. Projecting no, never its mind. power near and far across oceans. He's literally talking as if this was Until real. Until the city was struck by a series of massive earthquakes and floods, a truly cataclysmic event. You're completely leaving out the war between the Atlanteans and God, who was it? Gosh darn it! The Atlanteans are the bad guys, y'all. They were destroyed by the gods. Well, yeah, in the story, they're destroyed by the gods because that was the only thing powerful enough to destroy them. God, who... it was the Atlanteans? And I should look this up. That's what I should do. I don't give a shit enough. I don't care enough. I literally do not care enough to look this up. Um, first off, he's telling the story as if it's fact, as, as if it's just accepted fact. It's not. Um, he, I love that he's using this image that is incredibly modern to represent his oldest known source. And then he doesn't even tell the story right. Like, he's not even telling the right story. He's doing like everyone else does and just, you know, going over the fact that the Atlanteans were trying to take over the world they were starting wars with everyone and winning. And the reason that they were finally stopped was because the last culture they had a fight with, the last civilization they fought with, sacrificed themselves to destroy them. It's a thought experiment. It's a story. And if you're going to try to pretend like it's real, you need to at least get it right. <laughs> The Atlanteans were the baddies. I think that's the only thing Marvel's going to get right in this next Wakanda movie. And sank beneath the waves. Plato tells us that the story of Atlantis reached him through his ancestor Solon. That Solon... Atlantis... No, he didn't. His student said these things. Again, get the story right if you're going to try to use it as evidence visited Egypt, and we know the date of that visit. It was 600 BC. We do. And during that visit, he visited a temple, and the priests spoke of a lost advanced civilization, which they called Atlantis, which was destroyed in a flood 9,000 years before the time of Solon's visit. Just tell the story correctly. It's not gonna so hurt you. date for the destruction of Atlantis. 9,600 BC 
that's exactly the same time as an episode of global cataclysm and catastrophic sea level rise that occurred at the end of the Ice Age. Again, these things are not real. Coincidence? Maybe. But for the tale of Atlantis to accord so precisely with the latest scientific evidence on the end of the Ice Age should give even the harshest of skeptics pause for thought. Isn't it much? No. No, it shouldn't. You shouldn't even, like, care. Also, anytime this man says anything definitively, I just immediately assume it's wrong. Uh, so I'm just going to assume everything he just said was incorrect about the whole dates of the Ice Age and all that stuff. Uh, you know, some people you give the benefit of the doubt. Some people you doubt the benefit of. The, you give them doubt of the benefit. Can that? Anyway. More likely, it is just some sort of allegory. I might think that if it wasn't if it wasn't for the fact that the Plato story is echoed all around the world by people who had no contact with with Plato and what. Would you stop? Just stop. So now you're gonna sit here and cherry pick again, various cultures that have a story about something that something anything anything that was catastrophically destroyed, or you're going to try to tie atlantis down to being like flooded which it wasn't and therefore you're going to say that that supports your idea of a great cataclysmic biblical flood and i mean i already know what you're gonna say man notes for this episode i got lost somewhere around the bimini road and i'm gonna have to mute you my friend Let's see. Um, in this episode, we finally got around to saying the word Atlantis. Um, we finally got around to Hancock basically saying he believes in Atlantis. Um, we got to see him sit on a boat with his friend and bitch about how there's not enough archaeological evidence to support his belief that the Bimini Road is man-made. Probably because there's no archaeological evidence that the Bimini Road is man-made. Um, we are very clearly aware that uh, Hancock doesn't understand that an independent country does not have to have archaeology done inside of its borders if it doesn't want it done there. And somehow that's the fault of archaeologists. Um, uh, where, where else did we go? Oh, we also know that like he can't get the story of... Atlantis correct to begin with and that he kind of flubbed the timeline um, when he was doing the explanation. I don't know if that was intentional. It's not like there's different versions of this story. There's only one version of Plato's Atlantis story. Um, it's in Timaeus and Creatus. Uh, he, we know that he wants Plato to be the one saying the words even though in the story it's very clear that the person telling the story is one of the students not the author um and yeah and he needs the atlantis story to be true and real because otherwise he still has no evidence for his weird lost civilization um we've had no evidence provided for anything and uh, he apparently thinks Michael Shermer is an archaeologist. I got really confused with that transition from him bitching about archaeologists not doing his job for him. And then suddenly we're talking to Michael Shermer, who did make some very valid points. Like, where where is the evidence of this lost civilization? Where is their trash? Where are their buildings? Where are their tools? Um, you will notice that Hancock didn't even attempt to answer any of those questions and yeah that pretty much sums up the episode uh it jumped around and was kind of confusing I don't know I don't know what we're doing from here I'm a little I'm actually kind of concerned that each one of these because this is the fourth episode there's four more I'm a little concerned that each one of these episodes from here on out are going to progressively get less coherent um which really just makes things difficult for me because like 
it's it, like I keep going back to the invisible teapot thing. Part of the argument of the invisible teapot is you can neither prove nor disprove the invisible teapot because you can't, you can't, you can't prove or disprove it. You can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't interact with it. Therefore, you can't prove that it is there, but also you can't prove that it's not there. If that makes sense. It's a thought experiment. It's also a way of making fun of other things that we're not going to get into but you know it's i i don't know man i'm a little concerned about what the episodes are going to look like from here on out okay everybody i hope you enjoyed that uh if you did be sure to um give it a like uh subscribing isn't as important anymore um yeah if you've if you've made it this far um put a, a driving or a moat put a road like anything related to a road emoji in there only because the bimini road is um still not real i don't i don't care how many fancy graphics you put in your television show and how many times you go dive there in every single documentary that you make <laughs> i mean how many times has he been to the bimini road anyway i'm rambling i hope you guys liked it uh if you did feel free to comment and yeah I will see you in episode 5, where we will once again not confirm anything about a lost Captain civilization. Dinosaurs. See? Are you happy? Do you get it now? Do you get it? Honestly.